And um, today we're going to talk about maybe one of my favorite subjects of all time, which is VPs of sales have a quota. Why don't VPs of marketing? What the hell is going on? Why, uh, what corporate marketing versus demand gen, right? I think like in the old school days, you had like the Pepsi, Coca-Cola, CMO, very brand. Uh, now you're seeing, you know, those kinds of roles get eliminated in favor of a chief growth officer, uh, which is a lot more demand oriented. Um, so I mean, let, let's break this down a little bit, Aaron. Why did you guys, um, really make this such a, a core focus point in chapter six of the book yep. and why did you add this in there? Well, I think especially Jason, cause I know this is, um, one of the areas that he, uh, has written about and actually I can't remember the exact title, but basically the essence is if you have a marketing person, make sure that they don't spend all the bar budget on blue pens like on pretty things that don't generate leads uh, and how important ultimately, okay, like investments in brand look and feel is important, but it's all about how you generate leads. And for companies that are in this early growth mode, whether going from zero to one or one to X, you know, the few millions, few tens of millions, you know, it really everything should be primarily around how is this going to generate leads that are qualified, you know, quality leads. So, marketers, heads of leading marketing people need some sort of quota, whether, I mean, I think at least now it might be more common to measure kind of, or at least measure like new leads or cost per lead. Those actually aren't that great. They can be very misleading. Ultimately, the key metric is we call it sales, the number of sales qualified leads or sales accepted leads that get generated because that's what sales cares about. The leads, uh, it's not MQLs, it's not new, new leads, but how many actually get into the sales pipeline? And marketers need a quota around that. I mean, I, um, I love that. I personally am held accountable to a quota uh, at my company. In fact, uh, the entire demand. Yeah, what metric? We are uh, held accountable for uh, something is called qu quoted amount, which is um, actual pipeline gotcha. generated. Pipeline dollars, yeah. yeah okay. Pipeline dollars generated per day. So we have a daily and monthly amount, um, daily obviously fluctuates, but like, yeah. you know, if we don't hit it one day, we uh, carry that debt over with us the next day. And we actually talk about how we're going to overcome that debt. And really every day we talk about, you know, are we on track to hit our monthly uh, target and our commit to sales? Um, yeah. <laughs> so, well, by the way, there's the one challenge of going towards like that level um, I think it's easier to measure things like MQL as new leads. And it's true that you do need when you're measuring kind of pipeline, gen, you know, qualified pipeline being added, we call it like quoting amount uh, or number of sales qualified leads. You, it, it forces you to make sure, Hey, what are the ways that we're qualifying? Are they consistent? Can we trust what's being put in the pipeline? Or is one team doing one thing and another team doing another thing? So it's a, a lot, it's hard. So a lot of companies don't get to that point or they, it takes, they wait too long before they create that consistent qualification step so they can trust. If we say we're getting 5 million in pipeline, new pipeline this month, is that accurate or is it a guess? Exactly right. Uh, and, and dude, I mean, the last question to ask you before we sign off is like, you know, this idea of the corporate brand marketer who's going to maybe do partnerships with like, you know, some sports team or some billboard advertisement or, you know, advertise in the New York City subway system. Like at what point as a company do you start doing that? <laughs> like, how do you, like, you, you know, as you're growing, you need yeah. leads. So that stuff's not going to get leads in the door. So when yeah. do you start doing that? Well, I think for most companies, it's the point where you feel like, whether it's a 10 million revenue or a hundred million, like, okay, we actually have our demand gen programs working and we have a confidence. And if we spend X, we'll get Y, whether it's, you know, maybe it's a billboard or there's the kind of the, uh, the demand generation programs are generating a regular number of leads in a predictable way with some confidence. And you feel like, okay, we can have some experimental or brand or brand budget that we feel like it's important. We may not be able to measure it, but we kind of know it's important and you'll do some of that early because you need to, you need a website that's clear and makes sense. And there's some ways you can measure website improvements. So it's not like you don't do anything on look and feel and brand early days, but the primary focus is on how are we going to generate quality leads that sales cares about? Or if it's a B2C company, you know, get further in the funnel 
and the other investments, we should be doing some things that we might not, that we, we know we feel important, but we may not be able to measure it. Um, let's do those things, but in a more experimental way uh, after we've done the predictable lead generation investments, whether it's in marketing or outbound prospecting. Yeah. So for most companies, it's as you know, they get bigger, 5, 10, 15, 20, 50 million. Uh, I mean, obviously, it comes like Adobe and Salesforce. When you have enough scale where you can do, um, you're, just, you're just paying off over so many, like a, 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 a what's, it, what's the, super, oh, like a Super Bowl ad, right? There's some of these, like, and you have enough money, you can, it makes sense. You can kind of do those things. But when you're a smaller startup under a few million, a few tens of millions, eh. Yeah. Totally. So, um, I mean, I'm, I'm from the same school of thought as you and, uh, you know, I really enjoyed that section of the book spoke to my heart personally as a demand gen marketer. So, um, for the rest of you demand gen marketers out there that want to learn more about this, go to from impossible.com. Check this out. Uh, again, shout out to Jason Lemkin from Saster. Yep, uh, love Jason. Awesome guy. Smart. Yep. As F I almost cursed, but <laughs> are you not allowed to curse here? I mean, I can, but you know, what? some people on LinkedIn you can't fucking but... curse. What the hell? <laughs> well, yeah, I know I get it. Trust me. I didn't have cursing in the house. I have this little funny video of uh, our two year old. I'm saying like, what the fuck? It's more like a question. <laughs> oh, a teenager. We have three teenagers that swear like sailors. I'm like, uh, maybe it's a little much. So, but I get it. Yeah. It's, yeah, I mean, fuck it. There you go. Um, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so connect with Aaron on LinkedIn as well if you haven't already. And, um, yeah, check out the book, guys. I mean, this is, uh, this is really some great stuff, real-life practical, tactical examples and takeaways. So um, there you go. By the go. way, I think if you uh, – my settings, you have to put an email address for LinkedIn. So if you do want to connect, you can use Aaron, A-A-R-O-N, at predictablerender.com here on LinkedIn. Oh, awesome. I'm, I'm sure you yeah. probably get spammed too much. That's why you did that. Uh, no, I maxed out with the 30,000 connections, but okay, I can cool. you know, clean it. So uh, there you go. Yeah. And you could also follow without connecting. So you can do that as there well you so you don't miss any of the content. So um, thanks again, Aaron. And uh, we'll talk Thank to you. you again soon. Thanks, brother. Yes. Thanks. All right.